Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Roman Von Orsi coming to you live from Station 424 in Toronto, of course, uh, bringing you another one of our discussions in the fire hall series. Discussions about what? What else? Fire safety. I have with me my two colleagues, Brian Molly and Brock McGill. They'll be talking to you about barbecue fire safety in particular. Beautiful weather, a nice weekend coming up. There's no doubt many of you will be in the backyards barbecuing. We want to make sure that you do it safely and that you don't have any issues with your barbecue. But as always, before we begin, we want to give everybody a little reminder that even though we're outdoors, we have to have social distance and we have to maintain that so that we're staying safe and we're holding our family and everybody else. Safe, safe distance of ignorance. Now, we are outdoors, so be mindful. That's not a studio environment, so there will be sounds and distractions, so just bear with us. Um, remember to send us your questions, your comments, even your shout outs, just to say hello. You can type your comments in the comments field on the screen below. And uh, remember, you can always reach out to us at twilight.ca slash fire. So, Carlo, Rock, what do we got to remind everybody about barbecue fire safety? Good morning, Good morning, Brock. Good morning, Brock. Um, essentially, barbecue fires generally tend to start because of unmaintained barbecues. We tend to use our barbecues as a client, and we don't really think of maintaining that much. We tend to use it, cook it, and then we tend to forget about it. So, our discussion today, and Brock came up with a great uh, title for this, is called Beyond the Grill. What Beyond the Grill is, is that we're going to talk about how to actually properly locate how to properly maintain, and I'll show how to properly start both natural gas, propane, and charcoal barbecue. So, uh, right after the first thing, Brock, when we end up having a barbecue, where should we locate it? Should we put it next to the house, or at what type of spacing do we need? Good point, Carl. Yeah, we want to keep it away from overhangs, we want to keep it uh, away from fences, uh, window openings, any place that we can get. CO going into our house. We never want to bring it into our kitchen. We never want to bring it into our garage. We want it somewhere in a safe way of having a window and undergo anything that could catch on fire. Right, so you want to keep the distance away from it. So you want to end up making sure that any combustibles around it, you want to clear the space around it. And also, we want to make it clear that animals and children, just like in a kitchen stove, right. keep them three feet away. It's a very hot surface. Okay. So keep them away, give, a, give them a circle to stay back from. Perfect. So how do we maintain our barbecue? How do we uh, clean it as an example? Well, as you, as you had pointed out, Carla, we want to go beyond the grill. Everyone knows how to use a wire brush and clean the grill, but we want to go beyond it. So let's lift out the, the grills. Let's lift out the converters. Let's get right down to the burner and the, uh, the surface beyond the burner. Right, right. We want to get a pair of pliers. And George, if you can zoom in, we want to re remove this clip that holds the burner in place. So we put that, take that out. Now we can lift the burner out. But we have to be careful because there's an igniter wire on here, so we want to disconnect that. And then we inspect the uh, burner ports, and we want to take a wire brush, probably not the one we clean, clean the grill with, a clean one, and just brush off the surfaces. Right. Then we inspect the uh, the ports here where the air goes in to mix with the propane. We want to take a, a vacuum and vacuum that area. There could be spider webs, there could be insects in there. Make sure you clear it all of all those debris and inspect it. Make sure you can see through the, the screen. There's one, a screen protector there to keep the, uh, the spiders out and insects. Right. right. And then we're ready to put it back in. So I've, I've dropped the, the wire, so I've got to go looking for that. Okay. And Put it back in the opening. So it's pretty and much it's the reverse process of what you did, right? Exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a wire connection, so it's just push the wire back on for the igniter. And get it in to the, the wire. The wire's connected. Okay, now we reach underneath and make sure we're going into the burner, uh, the port for the propane, and we put it back in the slot. And then take our wire clip. You don't need wire, uh, pliers to put it in. Just find a hole and clip it in. So now it's, it's secure. <clears throat> Excellent. Then we want to clean all the debris that may be in the barbecue that we've left from last season. Oh, wow. Put that in a can because you don't want 
the barbecue self-igniting again with all the grease from chicken and beefs and whatever you've been cooking last year. So right. let's clean it all out, make sure it's nice and clean. That causes a lot of flame-ups, right? It could, yeah. yeah. And even the diverters can have a build-up. You can see that on the diverter. Let's scrape that off, make sure that that's all cleaned off, and then we can put our diverters back. And then replace the grills. And then we're almost ready. Right. We're almost ready for barbecue. Yeah. But we need to do something. We've got the grill back on. Everyone knows how to clean a grill. Right. What, do, what do we need for fuel, Carl? We well, need to move on to fuel. How do we connect it and how do we check that? It's good that you brought that up, Rock. And uh, I'm going to show you basically about what we have to be doing for that. First thing, all propane tanks should be stored outside. You should never, ever, ever keep them indoors. The fire code requires them to be stored outside. And if they are connected to your barbecue, it should be outside. So that's one thing. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to connect up this propane tank to this barbecue. And we're also going to test the connection to make sure that it's fine. So the actual fitting is a little bit different from your typical fitting. Usually it's left to loosen and right to tighten. In this case, it's a reverse strength, which is the opposite. So now that we have this on and we tightened it up, snug fit, you don't have to end up using a pair of pliers. It's not designed for that. You basically open up the actual propane tank. This line going to the barbecue and where the actual burner knobs is now charged. But what we want to do, we want to see whether this is safe. So now we want to see if there's any minimal leaks coming off of that. So the way which we do that is basically we get a little bit of soap, we get a little bit of water, you put a little bit of soap in there, and you come up with a nice frothy mixture. As you can see, you get a lot of bubbles on there. And what the bubbles do is that it creates a film. And I'm going to liberally soak every spot where there's a connection here. Can we every take the burner, spot. burner caps off too? Please? Yes, if you can do that for me, that would be a great help there, Brock. So yeah, I'm going to really douse this here. The more you put on, the better it is. Now, right now... If you see a bubble, what do we do, bro? Okay, if you see a bubble, that means you end up having a leak. That means there's a problem. Now, it could be a possibility that this might be loose. So you can tighten it up again. If the bubbles still, in, uh, still continue, then you might end up having a problem with the actual connection. Continue on and also put it on your knobs for your burners and also if you can fix underneath. Now, if you still end up getting bubbles at this point, bring it back to your local barbecue uh, repair gentleman um, or company and they'll take care of it for you. Um, you don't want to take a risk with uh, propane or gas. Um, you never mess around with that. A small leak can exasperate and cause a fire very, very quickly. You don't want to take that chance. So, so Carlo, what, what if a what if a hose breaks or uh, the 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 meat flames up on your barbecue? Okay. So essentially, uh, the best thing which you should do if you're cooking is close the lid to eliminate the oxygen. Shut off your burners, and then also shut off your actual tank by removing the fuel, and then. Call 911. Don't take a chance. You don't know where the leak is. It could get out of hand very, very quickly. You don't want to end up taking a chance. So if that's the case, remember, close the lid, shut off your burners, shut off your tank. If it's a natural gas connection, shut it off at the house, and then close the lid and call 911. That's the best thing you should do. What about, what about options for lighting a barbecue? How would you do that? Okay, so uh, essentially most barbecues already come with a built-in igniter, as you can see here. The igniter is what you saw, remember, when we were attaching the actual burners there. Remember, open your lid first, number one. Second, open your tank. Make sure you end up having uh, propane coming here or your natural gas connection. And what you do, you turn on your burner and then you hit the igniter button. It should start up your burner. I you haven't put your head now. over the grill to check to see if the flame's there, fellow? No, no. If you need to, first let it start and put your hand liberally over it to feel if you feel any heat. And never put your head or look down into it. It's far too dangerous. You don't want to take a chance. If you are beginning to smell a pungent smell, it's either the natural gas that's coming out that's not ignited properly or the propane. Shut off. And we start the procedure again. You don't want to take a chance of having a large accumulation of that, and then it ignites or you're going to have a large explosion. What are other options for lighting a barbecue if our igniter fails? Right. Now, what 
a lot of barbecues have. Well, uh, Roman, if you can do this, if you can come down with me over here, you're going to see it on this end. In this case, it's on both sides of the barbecue. There's an access hole right here. And if you come up on top, I'm going to show you how that works. What, what you do is that either you can use a, uh, you know, a long, a long neck lighter, like a six inch lighter, or you can end up using a match. And what you essentially do is that you turn on the propane, you actually turn on the burner, and then through the hole, you actually extend it through the hole and you bring it close to the burner and it'll ignite. But remember, your lid has to be open when you do this. You don't want to have a large accumulation of propane in here, and then you stick it in, and then it'll, the, the, the lid will come off right off the barbecue and it hurt you. We definitely we want to make this safe, a fun, wonderful barbecue environment. We want no one to get hurt. So you can use the long lighter, or you can end up using this little gizmo that came with the barbecue. You put your regular matchsticks, or you can buy long stick matches at your local hardware store or your dollar store. So if that's it still another. doesn't light, Carla, what do we do? Well, after numerous times that it still will not light, I would end up using the barbecue. I would end up, because uh, if we can end up having a safe transfer of the fuel to the burner, it's too hazardous to use. Yeah, but we smell so much gas, what do we do? Shut off the gas. Well, how long should we let it dissipate? At least five minutes. And then can we restart minutes. lighting again? Try it again. If it restarts and lights, great. If not, bring it over to your barbecue professional and have them take a look at it, see what's the model with it, and why it should be, uh, why it should be operating that way. That covers pretty much what we have for uh, propane and natural gas. How is it different for uh, our charcoal barbecue, though? Okay, well, we're going to go over here and have a look at the charcoal barbecue. And same sort of thing. We want to go beyond the grill. So we take the main grill out. And we look at the setting. Here we have a piece, a couple of full pieces of charcoal. We'll put those in the bucket. And we take a, this is the setting grill where you set your charcoal on to start it. Right. And we want to get a brush, probably not the grill brush. So we want to get rid of all the debris, put it, you know, squeeze it. So it's in here. We want to put that in, in the bottom and get it all nice and clean. We don't want to clear up. And then we take this out, a noisier sort of a bed, and then we put it in a metal tin. Don't put it in the garbage can right away if it's hot. Just keep it aside on a concrete surface. Put this back in underneath, right? And then we put it in place. Make sure all the openings are open. Right, right. That allows the, air, the fire to breathe. And then we put back our setting drill again. Yeah. And start to add the charcoal. To do, uh... Now, Carl, how would we light this charcoal? What's a good method? Well, there's two or three different methods which you can use this. The first, uh, your local hardware store would have a, an electric lighter. It basically looks like a heating element that you plug into uh, an, an exterior type extension cord. You put it into uh, the actual uh, fire pit and you cover it with your charcoal and it will begin to heat up and start your charcoal and ignite them that way. Another thing, they have these small little fire cubes. We don't have them here now. Again, you look for hard work store, we'll have it. Good you end up buying them, you put the cube in the center, and you light it, and it creates a slow burn. And it burns slowly, and it begins to light all the charcoal around it. That's another method. What's the safe fuel we could use to start a barbecue? It's great that you brought that up, because a lot of people are going to make a mistake on this. You can't use just anything. You should be using charcoal lighter fluid. Okay. If it doesn't say charcoal lighter fluid, that isn't the right thing to use. That, that's what you should be using for that. Now when you do that, you should douse your, um, your, your, your charcoals ahead of time with the lighter fluid. How long should you let it soak in there? For oh, two or three minutes. Read the recommendations on the actual bottle. For sure they got directions. And then what you do is again, with the lid open, right? Start with your lighter and gingerly, from far away, just lightly light it from a little bit of a distance. It should be able to wake up. Now, you can only use the match. Yep, long handle match or. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, a long handle, a long lighter. But one thing which I want to make sure specifically for this lighter fluid once it's started, Never spray it on top of the burden right. again. Yeah. So what would happen if you did that? Oh, you're going to have an explosion. Or you're going to have a flash. Oh, absolutely. Are you going to get burned? 
It might even come right back up to where yeah. so your bottle is. You don't want to end up taking that chance. So you should end up making sure that uh, you end up having a clear space around your actual grill. If you find that the that the uh, barbecue is becoming a little bit, you know, too much of a big flame, close your lid. Right? A fire needs three things to operate. It needs heat, it needs something to burn, and it needs air. By reducing the air, you end up smothering the fire, and the fire will go out. Now, I know you don't want the fire to go out completely, but at least you'll have a little bit more control over it. Once it's under control, again, re-open up the grill. So, are you ready for drilling this? Well, we should clean our grills. You know, give it a nice, good clean again. And then, you know, like, um, um, usually sometimes they end up having, like, a rag and a little bit of oil, just a cleaning oil. Or you can use pan, you can pre-spray the grill so it doesn't, so it doesn't, off there so it doesn't, uh, so it doesn't stick on. But then, once it's actually started, you should also heat up the grill to disinfect the grill. So what temperature do we need to set it up? Generally, I would end up waiting until it reaches around, around 400 degrees Celsius. Right? Or for Fahrenheit, sorry. 400 degrees Celsius is substantially more. So 400 degrees Fahrenheit would be enough for that. And then once that's done, then you can open up your grill or on your barbecues, you can dial down the heat for whatever type of uh, um, the thing that you're cooking. So that covers pretty much everything which we have for, we covered maintenance, we covered location, and we covered how to start the grills, right? Yeah, so all we need is the meat. Oh, that'd be great. We have a beautiful day for it. But uh, again, you're live with us here, and it's really, really great. Um, so, so far, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're looking forward to the questions. Uh, Roman, is there any questions? Yeah, we've got a couple of great questions. Great presentation, a lot of good information. Uh, I've got a question here from Stan. Stan is uh, asking, uh, well, he's actually saying, you know what? He has a charcoal barbecue, and he has a heck of a hard time lighting it. Um, he seems to think that a little bit of gasoline that he takes out of the lawnmower might be a good idea. What do you have to say about people who uh, light their charcoal barbecues with gasoline? You want to take that? Kind of oh, absolutely. Do not use gasoline. It's highly flammable. It's very, very unpredictable. You do not want to use that on on the charcoal which you're going to be cooking with food with. Gasoline is highly toxic. You don't want to use that. Always use the appropriate charcoal lighter fluid which you get from the part of worst that's what that's what it's designed for use that perfect perfect and uh, i got another question here from carl Carl was cleaning out the garage this spring and he found a propane cylinder that looked like it was about 20, 25 years old, but it still had some product in it. was wondering, can he use that and burn off the remaining product uh, in his barbecue this week? If it's 25 years old, it should not be used. We've got to take that maybe to our hazardous chemical place and go and purchase a new cylinder and get it filled up. So hazardous... As in this household of any of the city of Toronto uh, disposal uh, sites, they give you a place to put it. Yeah, that's a. Don't leave it on a curb. Yeah, don't put it in your recycling. It's got to go. It's got to go to the hazards. Great tip. Great tip. So yeah, sorry, Carl. Uh, maybe look into maybe getting a new cylinder as well. Uh, so, fellas, um, what if somebody has some additional questions about this particular topic or any other fire safety topic? You want to take that from? Yeah, it's great. We have a lot of great information which we have at Toronto Fire. So, basically, go to www.toronto.ca forward slash fire. We have a lot of great pamphlets, information on numerous items about fire and a safety. Whole list of barbecue. Absolutely. Absolutely, and we also even have some great items, even multiple languages as well. But thank you for joining us today, and we're, we're going to take advantage of our barbecue setup today. We're going to eat meat? a little bit. Where's the meat? Where's the meat? Yeah, so we're going to have that now. Thank you very much for joining us today. Safe grilling, everybody. Thank you.